Hey guys, Michael here with Hello Cupcake, it's me, and um, this is a ranting video, so if uh, you don't want to sit through it and listen, I completely wholeheartedly understand. Um, first and foremost, I would like to give a shout out to this company called Firmu. Um, they are sponsoring today's video. Uh, they sent me out a new set of glasses that are like really stylish and sleek. Uh, Firmu is an online um, optometrist, well, not really an optometrist, but an online place where you can uh, go and buy glasses. Uh, you go to your regular optometrist, you get your prescription, including your pupil distance, which normally isn't included. Um, because they know that there's online retailers now that kind of take money out of their pocket and they can't really charge and all that other stuff. Um, I have found that most online uh, glass shop places like this are typically several hundred dollars cheaper than traditional eye doctor prices. Um, so when you get your prescription and everything you go on their website you uh, can select through their vast selection of styles and frames and um, I like uh, lens selections uh, they can do bifocal they can do transitional they can do pretty much everything else that a place like um, Pearl Vision or lens crafters can do um, you may think, well, how can I try them on to see if they look good on my face? Well, they allow you to upload a picture of yourself and then um, just give you a kind of a basic idea of what the frames would look like on your face. And so that's what I did. And, um, you know, I think that it did a pretty good job. Uh, when they send you it out, it takes about a week and a half to two weeks to get to you. Um, with traditional doctors it's usually like three four weeks but um, I've noticed or I noticed with this company when I put it in I think it was like a Tuesday by that following Friday of the well the following Friday of the next week I should say Friday of the next week um, I had already had the are these glasses were already in my hand um, they sent it out in this nice hard clamshell that's uh, in well, it's not embossed, but it's imprinted with the company logo here. And on the inside, there is a cleaning cloth that you could pull out and clean your glasses with. Um, the glasses themselves came in this really nice, thick plastic bag um, so that they didn't get scratched or um, anything during the thing. And then uh, this little tool, which is a key ring. Uh, screwdriver and some extra screws so I thought that that was just like a really cool little nifty touch to add to it so um, I will put all the information for them in the comment section down below um, but you know uh, these are my new glasses and these are my older glasses so there is a bit of a difference these have um, polarizing lenses and um, tint and everything where these have the anti-scratch and the um, anti-reflective anti-glare on them there's still a little bit of a glare but you know no, nothing like what these are and these are also really freaking dirty but you know thank you so much to Firmu for doing that now to get into the actual meat and potatoes of the rant and this video today can just freaking suck it I know that's like completely switching gears and going from a kind of a positive upbeat thing to this, but um, it's 12 o'clock in the afternoon and it's already one of those days where I'm just like, fuck the universe. So I woke up this morning with kind of a sense of dread, like, oh God. This day is just going to suck ass, but I'm going to try to make the most of it. And so I get up, get moving, 
um, I get a phone call from my sister asking me if I would bring her and her work crew some hot chocolate and maybe some gluten-free muffins because some of the people on her crew are um, allergic to gluten. I'm like, yeah, sure, no problem. So I got up, got dressed, um, you know, did the three S's and um, got in my car and was driving along and for the last week and a half, two weeks, I've noticed that there is this homeless couple that have an RV that has a, um, like a travel trailer or a fifth wheel type situation connected to the back of it. Well, they were parked on the side of the road and it's a spot where people normally park um, like truck drivers and stuff they park there and hang out there overnight and then they move on about their business in the morning so I'm driving up and I see this um, highway patrol officer uh, here in the state of Washington we call them staters but highway patrol officer and he's getting out of his car and I just know that he's going to ticket them and I'm just I honestly stopped in the middle of the road, rolled down my window, and just looked at him like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And he just looked at me like, am I seeing this correctly? And I'm like, you, why? Why do you have to do this? They're clearly homeless. They have no place else to go. Is them staying right here for a night that big of an issue? So that kind of set me off and just kind of added to the precedence of what was happening or what would happen up to this point of me making this video. Mind you, like I said, this it's only noon and I really don't want to do the rest of the day. Honestly and truthfully, don't want to do the rest of the day. But I digress. So I go to the store, and because it's like Mayberry, everyone freaking knows everyone. I go in there, and I see one of my friends. I was like, hey, girl, how are you doing? What's going on? How's life? Blah, blah, blah. She's like, well, I woke up to some really bad news, and it's just really put a damper on my day. And I was like, oh, shit, you two, I'm so sorry. So we were BSing back and forth about this, that, and the other thing. Um... She didn't divulge what information it was until, and I had to find out through my sister, um, one of my friend's wives passed away. And um, I was just like gut punched because these two were the most perfect couple. They loved each other. They were always doing things together. It was the light of their life. And just... <sighs> I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional. But, you know... They're both young. And... Um, it was just one of those, like... Why? Why did this have to happen? I mean, we we say that about death anyways, you know, but... It's just one of those, like, oh my god, my heart is literally hurt and breaking for her, for her and her wife, who is now passed. And I'm just like, oh my god, I'm so, so sorry. Like, I just want to find her and give her a big hug and let her know that I'm there for them, or for her in her time of need, especially, like, only a week before Thanksgiving and going into the holidays and they had all these plans to do some traveling to go see friends and family and stuff like that and it's just like oh my god you know so beside you know that coupled with the highway patrol officer situation that was just like fuck stupid mercury retrograde type situation right so I go to my sister's job I give her um, the hot chocolate and the muffins and stuff that she requested and I get home and then I get a call from another person telling me that um, 
I think I mentioned this in another video, um, my friend Dory, she, uh, she's been looking for a new place to move to for the last couple of years, and every time that she found a place, the second that she would mention that she's on Section 8, they would slam the door in her face. Um, she's not that, that person, um, she's a widower, she's in, in her late 50s, almost early 60s, um, disabled, and, you know, just a good person, genuinely good person, but, you know, everyone hears that Section 8 thing and they slam the door on, in your face, even though it's against the law now, and has been against the law, but there's, like, new legislation that's like, listen, if you discriminate, you could lose your property type seriousness. Um, I've seen it, I've seen one case in, uh, California where, um, a landlord discriminated against a Section 8 recipient and ended up losing their property, and the property was turned over to the, um, to the Section 8 tenants, and the, um, and the landlord had to pay, uh, like, had to pay them reprimand. They had to give him money, anyways, on top of having lost the property. Um, I don't remember the specifics of what that whole thing entailed. I just know that it was one of those things that um, was like an extreme case of type situations. Um, so, anyways, for the last two and a half years, I have been dealing with and helping her try to find a place to go and dealing with the bipolar spiral that goes along with her being declined for places and everything else. So this last weekend we went and we looked at this place and it was gorgeous. It was in a beautiful neighborhood a block away from Kroger, a block away from Dollar Tree, a mile and a half away from Walmart, Walgreens, Rite Aid, Costco, you know, everything you could possibly want that we don't have in the town that we live in now. And she was just like so gung-ho about, oh god, this is the place I want, I can see myself doing this with it, do that with it, whatever, it was perfect. The um. The owners lived upstairs. You shared a common entryway. Um, a set of stairs went up to their um, apartment, and then you took the stairs down to the bottom apartment. Open concept living room, kitchen, dining room. It all connected into one. A ton of storage space. Like everywhere there was storage space, or some little cubby. Good sized bedrooms. The master bedroom had a walk-in closet with wraparound shelving, everything just freaking gorgeous, beautiful, checked every single box. Like I said, it was in a really good neighborhood, um, it was a block and a half from this amazing city park, and so she said a little prayer like you know please god help me get into this place it's everything that i need everything that i want this is going to be a brand new start i'm even thinking about moving to that city um even though i've been where i'm at now f going on 12 years um i just i'm feeling like i've outgrown my area and that there's just no more um resources or things available to me here and um, it's becoming more and more difficult to for my landlord to maintain the rent at the price that he charges me um, he could easily be getting fifteen sixteen hundred dollars for my place and he's only charging me six seventy five but um, as I've mentioned in other videos, I only make $7.91 on Social Security Disability. And so I'm just like, you know, I understand that you're not going to be able to maintain my rent at the, at the level that it is now. And I've even asked him about letting me purchase the place 
and putting my rent toward purchasing the home. Um, here in Washington State, I'm not sure how it is anywhere else. Um, when you rent a place and you put your first, last, and deposit plus security deposit or whatever else down, um, that has to go into a interest yielding account. Well, when we, when my sister and I moved into this place, there, it was like five grand, like maybe fifty four hundred at that point. And so 5,400 times 12 years, that's a pretty good interest rate. So, you know, it's one of those things that it's like, you know, let's take that and use that as my down payment. And then from now until whenever, let me just pay, pay off on this and just carry the carry the loan or whatever and then have it written up that uh, when you and your wife have when you and your wife pass away that it goes into like a real estate firm holding or something like that because um, it's aged out now where I couldn't even get a home loan and with making such a minuscule amount of money I don't think that I would even qualify for a home loan um, so it's just one of those damned if you do, damned if you don't situations. But I'm at that point in my life where I feel like my money should be going towards something. So, um, getting back to the Dory situation, she, um, she got another offer for another house that she looked at. It's a, um, single, single story, um, dwelling on like a few acres of land or what have you and she's always wanted a house always wanted to get out of like an apartment type situation and all this other stuff but everything inside of me feels that she's making a mistake she's constantly talking about how old her car is how she doesn't feel comfortable driving long distances to do her grocery shopping and I just feel like she's making a mistake. So I, I kind of told her in not so many words, I don't truthfully give a damn what you do. I just feel like you are making a big mistake in not moving to this new, this new place and staying in the area when you have more than once said that you are tired of being here that you are tired of the people you're tired of this that and the other thing that you want something new and fresh and blah 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 and then she goes and she makes the easy choice and it's like okay you know what i i have to wash myself of all of this i don't want to hear about in like a month or so how this place is now a piece of shit and how horrible it is or you know, getting pissed off and upset because the, the owners decide to sell because this particular property has been on the market five times in the last four years. People buy it because it has a lot of acreage attached to it and then they want to sell it off but when they find out that there's that that you can't develop on that other part of the acreage because it's wetlands then they get discouraged and then they sell the place off. So this place has changed hands literally five times in the last four years. Um, and with the housing market being the way that it is, if these people decide that, you know, we don't want to be homeowners or that this isn't turning a good enough profit for us, she's SOL. The people that she would have been renting from in the other city own the home. It's well established. They're just renting it out to kind of help them cover their other bills, but it's not like a necessity type situation. It's in a really good neighborhood where they have tons of kids for trick or treating and stuff like that. Everything that she wanted, the boxes checked, but I digress. It's her decision and I 
told her I would stand behind her, but that I that I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to hear any positives. I don't want to hear any negatives. I don't want anything more to do with her search for home because I just don't have it in my ability to deal with it any longer. So right now I am just like so frustrated with everything and I'm heartbroken and I'm just tired and I'm emotionally exhausted physically exhausted I have so much stuff on my plate right now with the holidays and with thinking about my own possible moving and um, I got a phone call from a friend the other day asking if they could stay with me for a month and I'm like just like I don't have the space to entertain let alone to put somebody up for a month and I'm dreading having to make this phone call and giving them the head the like go ahead or whatever and it's gonna be something that we have to really talk about and really just like come to some kind of agreement on that um, you know you can stay here for like maybe a week or so but you really need to find someplace else to go um, they're supposed to be coming back here to Washington for a um, for a court hearing uh, for a lawsuit that um, that they're involved with uh, they got hit a, f a year and a half ago and caused a lot of uh, physical damage as well as totaling out a car that they had just got and all this other stuff so um, I'm like you know, if your if your court date isn't until this time, you could come a week before that time. But there's no need for you to be here for an entire month, especially when it's spanning over the holiday season. And you know, I'm gonna feel guilty because I have things going on, and I don't want to feel like I'm obligated to entertain this per entertain this person or whatever because they do have family in the area that they could stay with also but you know they're, they're choosing or f wanting to stay with me for whatever reason so it's like fuck so I have all of that weighing on me and I feel like total shit because this person would not put that kind of limitations or restrictions on me but I'm just not in a good mental state right now and I'm really frustrated I'm really upset and just really just at my wits end I don't know if I can handle not having serenity within my own home and having to constantly pussyfoot around somebody sleeping on my couch because my blood sugar drops in the middle of the night I need to be able to get up, make food, do whatever. So it's got to be a, a little bit of an inconvenience having someone here, but I feel obligated to do so. And so it's only through that obligation that I'm even considering doing this. Um, I've thought of all kinds of scenarios to where I could get myself out of the situation but um, I, I just don't know what the situ what the answer or the solution is going to be. So that's where I'm at right now in life. It's just trying to figure out what the hell to do. So it's like, okay, yeah, Mercury retrograde is over, but I'm still getting the shit kicked out of me left and right and things happening to my friends and family that I, are outside of my control and I'm not a controlling control freak type of a person but you know we all get into our little habits and we have our our little habitats and just it makes it difficult to try to to try to get things sorted out so yeah I don't know guys 
I know it sounds like a bunch of unwarranted, unnecessary bitching, and it probably is, but it's what's going on in my life right now, and I just need to get it off my chest. I'm just feeling hollow, and I'm feeling overly empathetic and sympathetic, and just not knowing which way to go with things, so... I'm sorry about it being so long, I'm sorry about the rants or whatever, but there it is. So um, if if you'd like to do so, and you need to do so, you can leave your questions, comments in the um, comment section down below. If you need to get a hold of me, you can get a hold of me directly by sending me an email, hellocupcakeitsme at gmail.com, or you can um, hit me up in the comment section down below. If you haven't done so already, please hit like and subscribe and hit the bell no icon for notifications whenever I upload a video. And um, head over to the blog, hellocupcakeitsme.com. I post stuff on there that I don't post anywhere else. And you can also follow me on other social media platforms. You can um, check me out on Twitter. It's Hello Cupcake, the number four and the letter U. Or you can follow me on my personal Instagram, and that is Michael Scott Peterson. Uh, P E T E R S O N, not S E N R S I N. Um, so, anyways, it's almost a half an hour worth of me blah blah blind. Again, a big thank you for watching. A big thank you to. Uh, Fermo for providing me with glasses and for sponsoring this video and I will talk to you all later. Bye guys